I want to share with you my first psychedelic experience, which was insane. This is not a recommendation for or against psychedelics. I'm sharing this uniquely for educational purposes and to share what I've learned. I wanted to make this because it feels a little bit like we're at something of a tipping point in public perception of psychedelics. More and more information is coming out that offers potentially massive health benefits. Psychedelics are obviously not to be taken lightly. They're not toys. Before I dive into my own experience, which I'll leave a timestamp to down below, I just want to say that I've always been very curious about the metaphysical. I really love the quote by Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, which goes, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. That feels like it captures a big piece of my worldview. And I think about perception a lot. Our perception shapes our view of the world. And that in turn shapes our experience of the world. We go through life rushing from task to task, trying to bend the universe to our own agenda. And that's just not how life works. Not, at least in my opinion, as long as we don't fully understand what consciousness is. The infinite beauty of life. And I'm saying that completely sober right now. <laughs> a big motivator of mine on this earth is to experience as much of what it means to be human as possible. And so it kind of felt like it was only a matter of time before I would do this. I think it's really important to add really quick that taking psychedelics of any kind doesn't come without risk. And so it's very important to be mindful of that. The experience. This took place last year in the Netherlands. Uh, when I was staying at a friend's place who I'm going to keep anonymous. Basically, that friend offered to trip sit for me. They offered to stay in a different room in the apartment while I tripped uh, so that I could feel safe just in case anything would happen. I originally had no intentions of taking psychedelics whatsoever while in the Netherlands, but this opportunity sort of presented itself and it felt right, and so I went for it. I knew for sure that I didn't want to do this in a more public setting, like in a festival or something like that. What I took are known as magic truffles. It's sort of like the cousin of magic mushrooms. They are legal to buy in the Netherlands. There are stores that sell them all over the place. And I bought a little bag of 15 grams. The main difference is the way they're grown versus mushrooms. Either way, they contain the hallucinogenic chemical psilocybin, which is what makes you trip. So the day of the trip, I didn't eat very much because they recommend that you don't, you kind of do this on an empty stomach. So you don't eat very much and I took it like right in the early afternoon. I ate 10 of the 15 grams, which is like not a heroic dose or anything, but it's like a full amount, definitely enough to feel the effects. And the way I consumed it was a portion of it, I just kind of like chewed up and ate, and another portion of it I put in hot water, uh, like chopped it up, put it in hot water and drank it as like a tea. My friend took a microdose that they later said they didn't even really feel, but the idea was to sort of be on the same wavelength as me. The truffles, in my opinion, tasted gross, and they took a while to take effect. It was at least 30 or 40 minutes before I started to feel something. So while I was waiting, very nervously, uh, I just chatted with my friend, and then I started to feel weird. Like, it started to hit me 30 or 40 minutes after I ate them. I could tell something strange was going on. Like, my perception started to shift. So I told my friend, I went to lie down on the couch and they left me alone. They went to another room. Rainbows and roller coasters. So I remember lying down and every moment, like the intensity started to increase very quickly. When I would close my eyes, this first stage felt kind of like getting high on weed. It was, it was a body high, this warm vibrational energy all throughout my body, but it was more visual. Like closing my eyes, it felt like a colorful roller coaster that was moving a little bit too fast. And when I would open my eyes, the ceiling and the walls around me kind of felt like they were waving slowly, like warped kind of. Not like jello, but a little bit. This was intense and I actually started to feel motion sick from it. I didn't fully realize it at the time, but I was feeling disoriented and it felt like, the way I describe it now, looking back, it felt like my sense of self was like under threat. It wasn't like an ego death or anything like that, that didn't happen at any point throughout this process, but it felt like it was taking me a lot longer to figure out who I was. The established database of ideas that I had about myself felt temporarily less accessible. So this first stage 
you know, wasn't super enjoyable. I definitely was feeling disoriented. And at one point I really had to pee. So I got up and kind of stumbled my way to the bathroom. The only way I can describe it is that the aesthetic of everything in that bathroom, when I opened the door, it just looked like Gringotts, which uh, is the bank in Harry Potter that's run by goblins. Like it had that kind of creepy, dark vibe. And considering I am the chosen one, well, I guess I don't wear wire rimmed glasses anymore. So I don't know if I'm the chosen one anymore, but it felt fitting. Like I remember the toilet looking kind of tiny and twisted and there was this ominous feeling in the whole room. I was creeped out so I peed as quickly as I could and then I remember looking into the mirror, into like myself, I was looking at myself and it looked like there was some sort of filter, like a serpent filter that had been placed over the mirror at 15% opacity and it made me look kind of serpent goblin-like, like Slytherin. Okay, maybe I belong to Slytherin, not Gryffindor. So I stumbled out of the bathroom and back to the couch. And at this point, I don't know how much time has gone by. Not that much, 20, 30 minutes or 45 minutes. Really, it's hard to tell. Time, time passes differently, but I was feeling overwhelmed. The intensity of this experience was more powerful than I would have liked. It was full body and it was also psychological, like everything and my perception. So I'm starting to freak out a little bit and what we had done was I left my phone with my friend and they had left a few pieces of paper with a pen on the table. And kind of as I came over to the couch, I decided to start writing what I was feeling down. Um, and for those of you that have followed this channel, like you know that's extremely important for me. Documentation is like oxygen for me. It's like medicine. It's my way of making sense of my experiences and everything that I go through in life. And I think that was the key right there. Something shifted and I sort of entered the next stage of this trip. Something about the truffles had blasted off the barriers of my mind, it felt like. And it felt like I was accessing this greater knowledge this sort of connectedness to the universe or something and i was just able to connect ideas and see them in a way that i can't usually just very freely it wasn't like new ideas it was stuff that i would i kept thinking to myself ah, i know this i knew this already it was more so that i could just see it again very clearly and so i remember like frantically scribbling arrows and writing everything down as it was just blasting through my mind because there were so many ideas swirling around. Something about this process helped me calm down. I think what was overwhelming to me was I was experiencing all these things and afraid of losing it. Like it was happening so quickly and then wisping off. And something about the process of putting these ideas down on paper helped me kind of relax into the experience. I kind of entered this observer mode and it made me realize that I'm very attached to my ego. I was scared of losing it. What the truffles had done was bombarded my sense of self and made it a lot looser. Like this is how I would represent it, okay? My ego is usually like this, constricting me, like tightly, the sense of self that I have. And what this had done was made it all a lot looser. And so I had all of this space to roam around. I felt that both in my ideas and my perception of the world around me and also in my body, which was the most interesting thing. I remember thinking, I am breathing the deepest that I've breathed in years. Like I could take these big inhalations and it felt like my entire soul was pulling in air. And I had all these ideas about consciousness and education and domestication and the way we conform in society. You know, all the typical things that you sort of associate with a trip, really. But it felt so incredibly exciting. Before I knew it, I had filled four full pages of writing and ideas and connecting the dots. And once I had done that, I kind of dropped the pen and I was like in a different space now. It didn't feel like I was on this rainbow roller coaster. I just felt euphoric and I started to feel these sensations that I hadn't felt since I was like seven years old. You know, being in my parents' living room, like the feeling of the light, the way I used to see the world without the weight of responsibility, expectation, preconceptions, cynicism. It was just this openness. 
And again, another manifestation I had in my body was that I had these like warm pulses of energy throughout my body. It felt kind of like muscle spasms. I would like clench muscles and it would feel so good. Like I would just be doing this and it felt like I had room again in my body to express what my ego usually doesn't allow the space for. I remember spending a lot of this portion of the trip with my eyes closed because there was so much going on that it didn't feel like it made sense. I, I wanted this to be very internal and it was. It was definitely an exploration inwards. All of my anxiety melted away and it was just filled with euphoria and light, just light pouring through me. I just remember seeing the light sort of pouring in as it became like late afternoon. A few hours had already gone by and thinking, wow, that is so beautiful. But you know, I hear a lot of people talk about their psychedelic trips in a way that like an observation like that, they don't usually see the world that way. I do usually see the world that way. I am sort of blown away by beautiful things. The difference this time with this trip was that I felt that. It wasn't just like a, wow, that's so beautiful. I could feel the light kind of pouring through and I was just sort of seeing my whole life in this non-linear way. What sticks with me really is the feeling of that experience. You can't really put it in words. At one point, I sat very dramatically, cross-leggedly, in front of the light pouring in, as if I was some sort of enlightened monk. I remember feeling just powerful, strong, like all of the weight of my doubts and worries were temporarily kind of washed away. I felt like, wow, this is what I am without the weight of my fears and worries weighing down on me. Three and a half, four hours into the whole experience, I started to come down and it was a gradual process, but I remember feeling incredibly vulnerable. Like I couldn't make eye contact with anybody because it felt like they could see right into my soul. All of my barriers were down. I think this could have easily been a bad trip had I done it in an environment that felt less safe to me. Because it was so overwhelming in the first portion that if I was in public, if I was at a festival or something like that, it would have been way too much. So I'm really glad that I chose to do this in a quiet space without my phone and sort of under the supervision of a friend of mine, just in case. Now, some of the biggest takeaways I got from this experience have to do with self-perception and being a man, actually, believe it or not. Manhood ended up being a major theme of this trip. And that kind of took me by surprise because I didn't fully realize how much I was seeking to figure out what it means to be a man. This whole thing took me a long time to process, which is why I decided to wait an entire year before making this video. A big, big part of the trip centered around my relationship with women. And I'm gonna provide a little bit of context and background uh, so that all of this kind of makes a little bit more sense. But basically growing up, all that I cared about really was creating things, was exploring self-expression. I was an art student. I loved pottery, dance, theater, painting, music, like that is what I cared about. On top of it, I, uh, I'm 5'6", and that makes me several inches below the average height of a man in North America and Europe. I mention all this because for a long time, I felt ugly in the perception of women, in the eyes of women, in the female gaze, and somewhere along the way, in the education that I received from society, I got this idea in my head that what it means to be a man is to be tall, physically powerful, and unemotional. This idea really haunted me because it felt like I had to squash what I was. All the things were naturally coming out of me. I felt this constant conflict between what I was and what I felt like I should be. And of course, underneath all of it, really, if I'm just speaking in very honest terms, I had this fear that I was unlovable that I will be rejected and forgotten. And so during this trip, what I saw very, very clearly and what really stuck with me was that I was getting caught up on this 0.1% of what it means to be a man. And really what it means to be a man is all of this. There's so much more depth to it. But I was getting caught up on this outer layer. When I close my eyes and kind of go inside, I feel a lot of masculinity. I feel solidity in that masculinity. Like I could feel that energy naturally coming out of me. And that I was just getting caught up in my head about these really weird ideas that I had, not based on reality whatsoever. I could see that being a man is so much more than the things that I was associating with it. And that I have a lot to offer as a man. 
It just made me realize that people don't see me for what I am physically, but rather for the energy of my ideas and actions. It was a shift that has only grown since then and has really changed my relationship with women and with myself ultimately, above all else. I have never felt more confident than I have this year. It just feels like there's this deep reservoir of self-belief in who I am and what I'm doing and what I'm after. And I don't say that in a boastful way. It's not like a, I need to crush other people to feel good about myself. It's just a, a solidity that I feel that I haven't felt very much of in the past. And of course, there's the memory of being connected to this like bigger, greater sense of knowledge that I can't fully describe that I can't let go of. All of which to say, I don't fully understand. This made me question why these substances are illegal in so many places, most of the world. Really what this felt like was uh, a continuation of the internal work that I'm already doing. A tool, really. There's a brilliant Terence McKenna quote that comes to mind. Psychedelics are illegal not because a loving government is concerned that you may jump out of a third story window. Psychedelics are illegal because they dissolve opinion structures and culturally laid down models of behavior and information processing. They open you up to the possibility that everything you know is wrong. These are substances that can absolutely be abused and we should be careful for that. And I think like anything, this can be either a tool for expanding your mind or a form of escapism. But I think that applies to most things in life. I don't really think it has so much to do with the substance itself, but rather your relationship with it and where you're at in life. Anyway, again, that was just my experience. Uh, I just wanted to share this, especially considering where we're at in the world right now. So I just wanted to thank the sponsor for this video really quick, which is Audible, which is perfect because there's an audiobook that I wanted to recommend to all of you related to the subject matter. It's called How to Change Your Mind by Michael Pollan, who uh, I am a huge fan of. I've said it before, and I absolutely love listening to this audiobook. Honestly, it was so enriching to be able to deep dive into the world of psychedelics, learn about the history, and follow along in Michael Pollan's adventures through several different substances. Audible is awesome, what can I say? They're the leading provider of spoken word entertainment all in one place. They have a massive library of audiobooks and podcasts, and I'm getting pretty close to 100 titles in my library. I think I'm at 93. The way Audible works is with a membership, you get one credit each month good for any premium title. Uh, and once you get it, you get to keep it in your Audible library forever. You can start listening now with a 30-day Audible trial. Choose one audiobook and get full access to the entire Plus catalog totally for free. So if you're interested, you can visit audible.com slash Nathaniel Drew or text Nathaniel Drew to 500-500. As always, the link is in the description below. Also, the price for a membership is lower than usual for a limited time. And new members can always try Audible for free for a month. Thank you, Audible, for sponsoring this video. And thank you to all of you for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything that I've said here. If you agree with me, if you don't, and why, let's make the comment section a place of constructive conversation. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon.